Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're just going to be unboxing a bunch of stuff. It's kind of a random unboxing. I'm thankful for it because it's still snowy outside and cold and I'm sitting in the sun porch with a heater pointed at me. It's nice and cozy, but we happened to get some boxes from Gardener Supply, Felco, Aaron picked up a couple of DeWalt things, mm -hmm. but they have to do with gardening, right? They're not tools. I don't even know what they are. No, yeah, they, they have to do with gardening. I didn't know that DeWalt made these things, so I saw them on the shelf at Home Depot and thought uh, I should see what you think. All right then. <laughs> so I wanted to show you these things from Felco. They've just sent out a sampling of their new snips, or I think they're calling them harvesting shears. Um, it's a new line that they have coming out. They're set to come out the end of March. They don't have an actual date to put on them yet because with COVID regulations and shipping overseas, they are a Swiss company. It gets a little squirrely to put an exact date, um, but I'm excited for it. And they sent out two of each one of these pair. So there's a Felco 320, 321, and 322. So we'd like to give away one of each type to one of you guys um, so that you can uh, get your hands on them and try them out early like we're able to do, which is so fun. Um, so to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is uh, comment below this video. That's it. On YouTube on, only. On YouTube only. <laughs> yeah, I keep forgetting that. We don't do any of our giveaways through Facebook anymore because there's just too many scammer pages and there's nothing we can really, we have no recourse. We can report the pages and really nothing, not a lot's done about it. Anyway, that's frustrating. So we will just choose winners through YouTube and we will announce winners probably on next week's recap video on our highlights channel. Um, so we'll link to our highlights channel down below in case you guys don't know about that. We do a weekly recap where we take questions from each one of the videos that we post here on the main channel and we address those. So like the most asked questions and things like that. And then we announce all giveaway winners in those videos. So anyway, these are really exciting because it's nice to have some smaller snips to use for finer projects. So like, I'm actually gonna move this up here cause I thought, well, this is perfect. I could just try, cause I've never tried these before. These are brand new to me too. Um, so I can, whoo, oh my word. I can do a little trimming on this lemon cypress. Um, but it's nice to have them for smaller stuff like this for flower arranging, which you guys know I like to do a lot of. Um, but the 320 here, let's just take a look. One of the reasons I like Felco packaging so much is that all of them come to where you can just pull this out. And so when you're at the store, you can actually pop them out and feel them in your hand, which it looks like each one of them has this enclosure at the bottom. And then um, steel, they're steel frame and it's like a rubber coating. So it feels like kind of squishy and comfortable. They're ergonomic. Um, I did see that they have shock absorb absorbers, absorb absorb buh, absorption things absorbers is that a word yeah shock absorber. absorbers 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 a weird thing to say though that does sound weird anyway you can see that the blades on this one are a little shorter and they are curved which i guess curved blades cause less damage so people use these a lot like in grape growing and fruit production because you can cut branches and things without with like very minimal damage um but they all three of these are for lefty or right right-handed people so no matter which hand you favor you can use e any of these like you don't have to have a specific pair for you know specific hand anyway the blades are carbon steel and they've been plated with nickel and i don't know a lot about metals but <laughs> um, these have been be uh, built to be more durable and longer lasting and don't quote me but i think the last line of snips that felco has like the framework is plastic the um, tops are obviously metal still uh, but these have just been created to be more durable and last a heck of a lot longer so how do they feel they feel good. I mean, they? definitely they're lightweight. Do they feel um, better than other, or um, nicer than other snips? Um, or about the same? I would probably have to have another pair of snips right here. I mean, the cutting quality is awesome, but I, I don't favor a curved blade. I think I'm gonna like this next one the best. The Felco 321 has a straight blade. A lot of the same properties on this one. So the shock absorbers and the little plastic enclosure here on the bottom. Yeah, that actually even sounds really good. Hear that? That's like the best sound ever. My microphone's right there. But um, straight blade, yeah. Way better for stuff like this, for me anyway. Oh, that smells so good. Lemon cypress. It's comfortable to use. It feels good in my hand. 
Uh, and then the next one, the 322, is very similar to the 321, except for it's got a longer reach, so the blade is longer. I don't know if the handle handles the same, blade's a little bit longer. That feels good too. I don't know, I could use either one of these straight bladed ones. The um, curved ones just don't feel as natural to me, like, because I do a lot of this type of work and just a lot of uh, florist type of stuff with my sure. snips. So for me, the straight blade feels the best. Oh, I think I was showing you the bad side of the plant. A little bit of browning. What Not do you think, the, the longer one or the shorter one? Oh, I don't know. Probably the longer one. Really? Well, yeah, if I were to buy one pair. Probably get the long one? Probably, because it feels the same in your hand, but the blade is only, is, let's see, what is that, half inch? Maybe a little bit more? Yeah. Longer? Do you wish that there was a thumb catch instead of the enclosure at the bottom? Yeah, I think that maybe be the only drawback is that it does take two hands to get it shut on the bottom. I mean, that's not a big deal. No. Um, it would be if I was using them all the time um, to not have a thumb catch right here. Yeah, because I, I know that's like a, a big thing about the Falco 2s that you love is the thumb catch. I can do it with one hand to get it open. Uh, it's getting it shut. I need two hands to do that. But I don't know. I wouldn't probably use these as much as my Falco 2s because I'm just not naturally doing stuff that require these as much. But that sure cuts nice. You want to try? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, but don't mess, don't mess up my shape. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an exciting new development, new line for Felco. Uh, and like I said, they'll be out toward the end of March and- Mid, mid to end of March. Mid to end of March. And if you would like to win one of these pairs, just comment below this video on YouTube. That's where we will be picking the winners from. So easy peasy. First box from Gardner Supply. Kind of lightweight. This box is one of a multi-shipment. Oh, here's a packing slip, Erin. Oh, this is a, these are some more uh, fixtures for the Oslo lights. Yes. Okay. So we unboxed some Oslo grow lights, uh, which are fairly new. I think they're new this last year, 2020, right, Erin? They're white grow lights that are um, very flexible in terms of fitting them into your space. And the shelving can actually be like tipped up. The shelves can be, and you can move the lights around really easy. So you can do either really tall plants, if that's what you have, or shorter stuff. Like I'm using mine for seed starting because the um, shelves fit an 11 by 22 uh, tray, which is standard for growing really well. But I did need some more light, some more LED light fixtures for it. So this one, you're starting seeds with the LED lights for this particular system anyway. They recommend two lights per uh, shelf. Thank you instead of uh, just the normal like one. Well, I guess it's not normal. Like our sunlight three tier gardens have two yeah. tubes per uh, shelf. Anyway, the cool thing about these is they have magnetic um, fixtures. So instead of having to monkey with like screwing a piece into the top of a light fixture and then having another piece down here where they can connect together, you just attach the magnet and it just like snaps to the bottom of the shelf right above the other shelf. With a really yeah. satisfying like thunk sound. Yeah, it's really awesome. And then you can adjust them however you want really easily. Um, and they all come with like these little jumpers so that you can put two together if you want, or you can just run one. Anyway, two of these in this box, that's awesome. I think that's everything. Can you, yeah. yeah? What is it? Um, it is. Oh, a garden tub cleanup cart. All right, well, you want to assist me with this? Sure. So this is the 11 gallon truck right here, which just slides down in there, which you could, you know, dump whatever you have in there out, slide it back in, and then you can just take off with it out in your garden. Definitely for small gardens, would you say? Well, not necessarily. Like, I mean, if you have sidewalks anywhere or if you're just doing like little fussy things like deadheading, um, this would be fine. We need to have one that's like this that holds a kangaroo pop-up bag. Oh yeah. Or like something that size, 30, size 31 gallon capacity. I feel like um, you'd have a tough time getting that through gravel. Oh, I don't think so, unless you put a ton of weight in the bucket, which I can't see anybody doing that. Let's try it. Okay. 
Oh, look at my tulips. Look. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, excitement. Okay. Nope, no problem at all. I think if you weight it down, like if you put rocks in your trug, yeah. then it might be difficult uh, going forward. But I don't think dragging it would be a problem even then. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's handy. Next. Well, that's a big one. Oh, I know what this is. Okay, I'm assuming I'm doing this right. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Yeah, so check that out. So this is like their paper pot kit right here, which this is like an accordion style. Well, you can see like I had to stretch it. Um, and they're just like basically paper dividers and there's 50 cells in here um, and all of which sit on this tray that will hold soil in but allows water to pass through so you need to put it like in a light system that has a tray underneath it or just on a tray um, that'll catch the water uh, but the nice part about this which I've not tried this before but I'm guessing the nice part is is that they come apart easily and it helps um, avoid any kind of transplant shock with the roots because this paper will just disintegrate and, and you know start composting right into your soil so you're not having to like take them out of plastic pots and things like that so um, yeah this will be really exciting did I already say there's 50 cells in here so you can start 50 things and they're quite large cells when you have uh, plastic pots the pot itself takes up so much room that oftentimes it's harder to get cells this big in that quantity in this size of tray so this will be really fun to try out how much do these run does it say how much they are oh the starter set is 35 dollars, and then i'm assuming you can buy more of these paper inserts now Pop out pots, set of four. Okay, let me figure this out. Fold a capillary strip in half with the soft side facing in. Okay, place it into a pot with the narrow center of the strip sitting da -da, like this. Oh, so you fold it in half all the way and then you put it down through the pot. There's a slit on the bottom. There we go. And then these fold in. Okay, so I see how it works. This is our reservoir tray right here that the water goes in and then the wicking capillary mat comes through the bottom and sits down in the water and it helps soak the water up, making them um, self-watering. And then these sit on the sides like this. See how the pot goes down right here? It kind of lips, there's a lip there and the soil goes in. You plant your stuff and it's a nice deep uh, reservoir. So if you have things that don't like to have their roots disturbed, like um, or they have like a very vigorous root system, sweet peas, dahlias, things like that. Then you can grow in these. They have plenty of room to grow. When you're ready to plant them, you just pop the whole thing out like this and the whole root ball comes out on the mat. And then you can kind of peel the mat off and pop it out in the garden. That's actually pretty cool. So the only thing that you're, is a one-time use is the capillary mat. Well, no, I even think that you might be able to get multiples oh. because um, we have capillary mats in our self-watering seed starter kits in the grow room right now in the studio. And I've used those capillary mats for several years now. Oh. They do have replacements though, and they're really inexpensive. So like after a certain amount of time, if they start to break down a little bit, then you can replace them. But I don't see them uh, like the amount of water they're wicking seems to be really good still. So the only downside, like I like the fact that there's big pots. The only downside is um, grow light room. Like if you're planting stuff under grow lights, these do take up quite a lot of space. Oh, sure. Um, so it's just something you have to be mindful of. Like usually I'm starting so many things that I can't afford to put like space wise yeah. to put a lot of these, but I can do a few. Yeah. Um, and certainly like perfect for a windowsill. Yeah. So if you've got a south facing or west facing window um, and you want to start some seeds, this is a, like a, I think a handy way to do it. And I'm, I'm guessing that the rest of these boxes, yep, are the same skews. So there are five sets of four here for us to try out. That nice. That's really awesome. Fun. I yeah. like those. Oh, this is meant to pot up. I mean, you could start seeds, but 
you can pot up transplants into here. That's what it seemed like. Yeah. So this must go here. Does that look like it makes sense to you from the front? Yeah. So I'm guessing this one goes in here. This one here. And that one there. Galvanized triple planters with stand. This doesn't make sense though. To me, it feels like there should be another one right here, right? Does it look like it's broken? Yeah, it is. Yep. So there should be a little uh, metal ring right here that hooks onto that one. Was that me? Did I do that? I didn't really, I, I didn't yank it out of the box too fast. Either way, that's fun. Yeah. Little decorative thing. I'm glad they sent, um, or that they include grow bags. Yeah. You nice. definitely though, I mean, there's no saucers. So you'd either want to saucer underneath the grow bag inside the planter, or you would want, well, even then though, you're going to have some moisture coming through. It's an outdoor display. Yeah, for sure. It's outdoor. outdoor. Yeah. Just call Ooh. it an outdoor display. <laughs> Looks like we have a couple boxes left out there. It says this is a Zenith Fold Garden Support Medium. This is bright. Look at that. Whoa. So I saw these in the catalog and they have uh, these supports like around tomato plants, uh, which you guys know, like normally I don't do super bright colors in the garden, but I think the majority, I think they, pro they were smart to do bright colors. Cause I think the majority of people would like a bright pop of color, but there's a small population of us that like neutrals and black. Like I, I will probably use these. I'll just spray paint them black. Cause they, I think, yeah. Did they sell them in black? Uh, no, I think blue and yellow is what I saw. So I wonder if those are blue in that box. Um, well, just let me see. Let's see. It says these supports should be installed in firm soil. They are not intended to be used in loose or sandy soil. We got firm soil out there. Yeah. For the tall supports, assemble them first by sliding the ends on the upper pieces, blah, blah, blah. Is that what it says? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yada, yada. <laughs> Tie the main, main stem of plants like tomatoes to the center of the support as it grows. So it's like to the center here. At the end of the year season, remove the supports from the garden and fold them flat for easy storage. That is nice when they fold up like that. So there's two of them in this box. These are the medium size. You can see the stakes here, so you probably want to push those into the ground probably as far as they go, especially if you're putting something heavy on it. And there I'll you have put it. Put them out in the grass and we can, when we got them all. Oh yeah, we'll show it perfect. Different. Yeah, let me get this one out for you. They're, they're fairly light, they're metal. Nice I kind of like the colors Sunshine though. Sunshine color. Would you like me to leave them colorful for this season in yeah, the cut flower sure. garden? You know in the cut flower garden it would actually work to yeah. use some colorful. Oh yeah, these are blue. Well, I kind of like this color. It's like a uh, subdued, but it's still bright, kind of. Should give uh, Benjamin this, this oh, bubble wrap. He would love that. He'd have to go in his loud playroom. We've created a second kind of play area for Benjamin called his loud playroom. Uh, when Samantha was born, so now he has this quiet play area down in the great room where we usually are. And he has this loud playroom where he can go and just like be as loud as he wants. It's worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. That way he sells a spot to be a three-year-old boy. Okay, so that's the bottom. Yeah. Those look tall. Yeah, they do. Like, well, yeah, yeah, really tall. Like seven feet? Um, I'm not real sure. I really should have done this mail time, like somewhere where I could be more mobile. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard sitting back here. Okay, it is so bright out here. It really is, all the snow. Yeah, but you can see the medium supports and then they call these the tall supports. I feel like there should be one in between. Yeah. That's quite a big difference. But I like them. Well, you may leave them colorful for you this year. You should for a little while. And then we'll paint them black for next year. Yeah, that'll be fun. I like stuff that's like um, movable, like really easy to move uh, around and easy to put together. God bless the inventor of things They're that are easy, easy to, to put together. together. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. Well, close your eyes. Did you know that DeWalt makes a sprayer? Here, you can open this. Oh, a pump sprayer. Yeah. So, you know how you've been having all sorts of trouble with your pump sprayers? Yeah. Like they quit working. Like, is it called the diaphragm or uh, the pump part? Whatever it is, quit work, quits working. Uh -huh. So, give DeWalt a shot. May as well. So, this is a two gallon capacity. Oh my, the tubing is like beast. 
Okay. So a bunch of different spray tips, Erin. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So you don't want to lose any of those parts. I'm just going to put them back in here. I don't want to lose any of these parts in the mix here. Like that. I know myself. <laughs> install the nozzle. Okay. So to install the nozzle. How do you say that? Nozzle. Nozzle. Nozzle? Nozzle. 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 <laughs> Is that wrong? Install the nozzle. There's like a really, uh, like, the emphasis, you're putting a lot of emphasis on the <laughs> ah part. Hey, nozzle. you want to know something? I'm going to take the nozzle. <laughs> nozzle. <laughs> Do be fun to me. I'm not making nice. funny. It's just funny. Okay. I'm not sure that I've ever heard anybody call it a nozzle. I bring you great joy. I do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so number one is the cap nut. The jet stream nozzle is this one right here. This yellow, uh, orange one. The foaming nozzle, number three, is this one right here. Foaming nozzle. Number four is the Brown Max volume, volume fan nozzle. That's a fan shape. Then we've got a red high, vo high volume fan nozzle. Yellow low volume fan nozzle. Seven is the adjustable cone nozzle, which is this right here. Um, number five, no, number seven is, no. This is the adjusting cone nozzle for crying out loud. Um, eight is the flat seal right here. Number nine is the adapter, which is already on here. And number 10 is, of course, the wand. Let's try the max volume. Okay. Oh, Aaron's already got the other thing out. It's another uh, sprayer, backpack yeah, sprayer. Yeah. Well, why don't you bring that on over here so I can take a look at it. This one's all set up. Okay. That is nice. It's a four gallon. Here you go. Why don't we get everything set up and we'll go outside and try it out. Okay. Okay, I did the max volume on this one. Whoa. You guys see that? Oh, nice. Does it kind of feel like every so, other sprayer you've ever used? Well, in the beginning, yeah. I mean, time will tell. Yeah. You really can't see water volume in there, which is a bummer. Oh. I mean, you can tell by uh, heft, you know, by lifting it up. But I couldn't walk into the plant room and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna have to grab it. And I guess it doesn't really matter. Look at that. That's kind of intense. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't think you'd really want that much, would you? Well, yeah, it's soft. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I could do plants with this very easily. Okay, well, that's good to know. Nice. So it, how do you know when you've gotten two gallons in that sprayer? Well. Is there no way to tell? Are you just completely guessing? Because you overfilled it, overfilled it. I did overfill it. I mean... Can you see? You can see it a little bit. See it a little bit in there? Yeah. If the light's shining through it just right. See? Yeah, that is kind of a bummer that you can't. It's not like super visible. Well, you could just not be like me and fill it all the way to the <laughs> brim. <laughs> um, I feel like the, the pressure, um, like I'm only having to pump it, what was that, five times, four or five times? And I get this kind of pressure. Before with my other sprayers, I had to pump it like 25 times to get the right amount of pressure maybe not 25 maybe like 15 10 15 all right let's try out the other one okay remember fill it up to the brim <laughs> oh i guess i could leave that in there huh filter basket thing okay with backpack sprayers you want to be careful where the water goes because if you get it all over the place then you get your back all wet okay oh well, if you need help i'm doing it myself I would need to adjust the straps for me. Like sure. they need to be a little bit higher. But you just do this. That's real loud. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. <laughs> like 
I don't know what that is. Okay, well, I did apply the, this is a spray optimizer, which is an optional piece if you're doing a low flow application, which is recommended. It's said in the uh, manual for like weed spray applications, which is how we would use this one. Sure. Uh, because we strap this on and do like the gravel areas. Let me pump it up a little bit more and see. Okay. That sounds real weird. Yeah. Is it like, is there something in there? Was there paperwork in there? Oh, I wonder if there was. No. Oh. Okay, pump it. Whoa, holy moly. So this thing was inside there. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna try to put it back in. Okay, I got that piece back in. It's still making noise. But, you know, we noticed when we put the handle on that it was dripping water a little bit. I wonder if it's possible that somebody has already used this one. And took it back because of this? Yeah. Although, it is spraying pretty good now. Pretty well. Pretty good. That still doesn't seem like it's... Uh... Well, it could be just the nozzle. Um, this is to avoid uh, overspray, like drift. So what would happen if I put the different nozzle on? Let's see. Oh. Oh, wow. My. Okay, that's definitely the wrong one to put if you're uh, trying to spray weeds. Yeah, I see why the yellow is that low flow. Yeah. I think the pressure is good. Yeah, it's really good. All right, well, so in the end, what? We'll um, try these out and I guess give our thoughts later? I don't know. I think we should probably explore that um, sound. Yeah, I'll, I'll look online and see if other people have mentioned that it makes noise because if not i wonder if we got a lemon yeah we might need to take this one back i do like the pressure though it's really nice and these are easy to swap, swap out swap out yeah cool well and i've got video. some i got some plants to go water right now so that's pretty much it for the video today we just wanted to show you what we had going on here and some of the new stuff we're going to be trying out we will link everything down below um i have no experience with any of these things they're all brand new to me so um i can't vouch for how awesome everything is <laughs> so anyway uh thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye